Good morning, America. Mike Morini, your favorite write-in presidential candidate for the 2024 race. As always, I'm in between sets of my workout, doing some pull-ups here today, so excuse me if I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the Second Amendment. I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. I really don't feel like I need to go too far into explaining that. The right of the people to keep and bear arms, the people being us, shall not be infringed. That part of the, the entire uh, Second Amendment is pretty cut and dry to me. Um, because we the people are that militia that it speaks on and well-regulated in the time meant in good working order. For example, my last vehicle I had was not well-regulated because uh, it didn't run that well. It didn't work that well. Anyway, hey buddy. Got Jack here sniffing around at me. So, personal responsibility with the Second Amendment. Um, whenever we talk about gun control, we often hear these terms thrown around like, you know, assault weapons, military grade, weapons of war, and more commonly, common sense gun control. The problem with all these catchphrases, and that's really all they are, is just catchphrase is that they're, you know, especially with common sense, the, the people writing these bills don't have common sense. They're relying on fear-mongering and panic from the population to get these things passed. They don't make us safer. It, they just infringe upon one of our rights, stripping it away slowly but surely. Now, when I go into the, do the doctor's office, there's a sign on the door. It says, no weapons. Okay, I frequently have a firearm on me, so I have to go get rid of that for a little while. The only thing stopping me from carrying my weapon into the doctor's office is my willingness to follow that sign. I could easily ignore it, but I choose to follow the laws. Someone with ill intent walking in there is going to ignore that sign, and they're going to know with all certainty that someone who might act to protect the people in there would not be armed because they would have followed that sign, obeyed that sign. That's essentially how gun control functions. I, I can't say that it works, or really even functions probably a bad word, but, you know, it doesn't act as it's intended to. Yeah. Okay, you just want me to throw this ball out. Uh, anyway, so personal accountability. So there was a school shooting a little while ago. The parents were recently tried and convicted of negligent manslaughter, negligent homicide. Uh, essentially what happened is their, their son told their parents repeatedly that he was having these bad thoughts. He was having, um, as we call it in the military, the, the spicy sadness. He started talking about his ideation of hurting people. His parents completely ignored that. He started acting up in school to the point where his parents were called in for a conference. And the, the, the people of the school, the staff of the school, were telling them that your son is acting in a violent manner and he's really kind of freaking us out. And they failed to mention that they had recently, two days prior, purchased their son, as in went to the store and picked up a firearm for their son, who's like 15, 16 years old. I forget exactly how old he was, but they purchased a handgun for a minor who's saying he's, you know, having these fantasies about shooting people in his school. And there they are, not saying anything to the school staff that, hey, our son now has a firearm. So they were uh, tried and convicted of uh, negligent homicide. And, you know, I think that is the correct answer because they ignored all of the warning signs. And this is typically what happens with these red flag laws, these so-called red flag laws, is that they wouldn't have done any good anyway because the people who were in a position to act for these potential shooters, um, didn't 
well, you know, we not potential shooters, but they were they ended up being shooters. The guy from Sandy Hook. You know, after seeing photos of his room, you could see that there was something wrong with this person. Yet his mother did not act in accordance with prudence to prevent him from accessing her firearm and, well, killing her. So she didn't obviously get tried. But then he took that weapon across state lines and shot a bunch of children. These warning signs were ignored. So I would say that it's less about... taking guns off the street as it is enforcing accountability. Because if you're going to allow someone to access a firearm and you're going to ignore all of the warning signs that they might go hurt someone else or commit a crime with them, you're culpable. You're part of the problem if you're doing this, if you're allowing this. You know, I lock my stuff up when not in use. Um, and I think that's reasonable, but I mean, I frequently have something on me or readily accessible to defend the home. I also have two dogs to defend the home, help me out here. So, I mean, these are just some thoughts. Personal accountability needs to play a role in any conversation we have about preventing these shootings. Um, if I have to, if we have to turn our schools into fortresses to prevent people from accessing them, we will. Um, you look at uh, the, the shooting in Texas. They had they had a, a plan. They had security procedures um, that were not followed. The shooter was able to get into the school just walking through a side door that was propped open. It was known to be propped open. Physical security also plays a factor here. Um, you know, all of these things. None of these things will work if they're not used. Um, school resource officers, I have mixed feelings on because I don't want a police officer stationed in the school and an enforcing school policy uh, because police are going to, well, act as police as they should. They're not there to act as administration or uh, administrator enforcers. They enforce laws. They're there to protect the kids. Um, all right, I'm just kind of prattling on now, so I'm going to cut this video. Uh, just, just some of my thoughts. We do need to protect ourselves, and we have a God-given right that is enumerated in our Constitution to be armed. Hope this video finds you well. Morini 2024, go ahead, hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. God bless America. Ugh. I've got to do this.